Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So happy to have you with us again on this weekend here on the program. Our program airs every weekend uh, at these same times. By the way, if you're watching through RCTV, our, our program times there have changed uh, from what they were in the last uh, in last year. Just changed slightly, half hour on Sunday, uh, different time uh, as well during the week. So please pay attention to these changes in time. If you're watching there, if you normally watch there, or if you'd like to share with someone where to watch, our CTV times are, are changed. The, the times out in the uh, suburbs will remain the same. So if you're watching through that, by all means, that those times are the same. You can always connect up with us as well on Facebook. We air the latest uh, version of our program every weekend, every Sunday morning on our Facebook page, Destiny Preparation Church. Or you can also link up through our YouTube page and connect up with all of the historical uh, uh sermons and uh, programs that we had over the past several years. Been on the air now for several, several years, and I pray it has been a blessing to you. Right now is a great time to be familiar with the with the YouTube channel because we're in the midst of a series that's going to go on for several weeks. We just started it last week on the process, and we'll be continuing it over the next several weeks. I share this with you in, in great detail. You know, what I'm sharing with you uh, at this time is something that you, many of us in the church have heard different aspects of, different pieces of, but I'm attempting to put it together into a flow so that you really understand and connect these things. These are things that God has instructed for us to do and to become because he's trying to take us someplace. He's trying to make something of, of us more than just being saved. He wants us to become ultimately what he designed us to be, his children and his des designees, his delegates here on the earth. But there's a process involved of getting from where we come from and what we were born into to where we're supposed to be. And that's what I'm talking to you about over these next several weeks. I pray this is going to bless you. I'm gonna take you into uh, this next part in just a moment, I, but I do wanna to mention to you that this is our consecration week here at Destiny Preparation Church, consecration month here at Destiny Preparation Church as well. We are already well into our time of prayer and fasting and consecration because we're seeking the will of God, both for this church, for our families, for us as individuals. It's a great way to start the year by setting yourself in alignment with the will and purposes of God in your life. And you have to learn how to hear the voice of God, the direction of God in your life. If you don't know about that, I invite you to come and join us. This is a great time to connect up with that aspect of being a child of God. Here at Destiny Preparation Church, you'll receive it on, on Sundays throughout this month in particular. On Wednesdays, we are in prayer here at Destiny Preparation Church. Come in to the anointed presence of God at seven o'clock this month uh, for prayer. And then also we, we, we are going to have a very special closing service, prayer service, on the 26th, Friday the 26th of January, culmination of the month of, of praying and seeking and hearing from God. We're going to loose the power of God in here. We're going to be the anointing is going to come in and touch people's lives. You are invited to join us. That will be on the 26th at 7 p.m. here at Destiny Preparation Church. Now, let me take you back into this, this series I've started last week called The Promise. This is a step-by-step -step move of what it is or instruction of what it is that God is trying to do and where God is trying to take us. The first piece of this is salvation. He's already done the work. He wants you to be saved. He's, all, he's made the way so that all we have to do is receive it, accept it, but it doesn't end there. It's just the beginning. I'm going to tell you more in more detail about this process of salvation though today, and we'll continue on with the remainder of it in the weeks to follow. Make sure you stay tuned, stay connected, Find a friend, call a friend, share on Facebook to a friend. Let somebody know, hey, there's some great word coming for you that's going to bless you to become more of what God would have you to be. I believe it's timely to this month and what's happening, and I believe it will help prepare you for what God has in store for you in 2018. God bless you. I hope we'll see you here in the services real soon. You've got to learn how to put God first. Share many times, amen, with people that we've gotten away from the idea of making certain things sacred or holy to God. That means there were certain things that we would give or consecrate to God and we would never touch them again. 
People used to have prayer closets. Y'all can't hang out in the, don't play in the prayer closet. Amen. This is not for your, 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 your golf clubs in the prayer closet. This is a place that is excluded for prayer. There used to be a place in the house that was given to God. Thank you for the whole house, but God, this is for you. Amen. We used to have Sundays as a sacred time. Amen. I'll do this and that for you on Monday through Saturday, but Sunday is God's time. The concept of keeping him separated, that's the concept of the Sabbath. The six days you work, but on the seventh day, you rest. On the seventh day, it's my day. There needs to be a concept of putting God first. Everybody say, put God first. Put God first. Yet man had the mindset of willful disobedience against God's instruction. God said, do it one way. Man said, do it another. You know, many times God will tell us, amen, this is the right way to do it. And we just decide, no, no, uh, I think this will be better. I think this will work out better for me. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody ever been there? Amen. Now, we may not like to admit it, but the truth is we did it our way instead of God's way. Amen. That's why we ended up with somebody we weren't supposed to end up with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we ended up in a place we really shouldn't have been in in the first place. Glory to God. That's why we bought stuff, amen, that we really couldn't afford. Amen. Are y'all with me today? Y'all hear what I'm saying? How many of you been there? Come on, just admit it. How many of you been there? Let's, let's just all go through this together, shall we? Amen. It's a mindset that takes us away from doing things the way that God would have us to do it. And so it allows, amen, sin to enter not only into the world, but into our thoughts and our ideas and our concepts and the way that we do things. And it causes, amen, the loss of godly authority. You can't carry God's authority when you're trying to do everything your way. Amen. Amen. You can't carry the power of God your way. You can only, that's why some of us can't handle being anointed. Because if you were anointed, amen, you'd whip everything that you had a problem with. <laughs> Y'all with me? <laughs> amen. You'd beat them, put people down and curse this one and rebuke that one. God can't give you that authority. You can't handle that yet. Amen. We have to take God's authority and use it God's way for God's will. We are ambassadors. We are sons and daughters of him. How many of you want your sons and your daughters to take your stuff and do stuff with it that you don't want them to do? Amen? If they're taking your stuff, you better handle it the way I would expect it to be handled. Amen? If you're taking my car, you better not be taking my car, amen, to the hood. You better not be taking my car to do stuff, amen, that I would not be doing in my car. Amen? You better not do with my things what I wouldn't do. Amen? amen. That's how it is with God. We can only carry, amen, when we're in alignment with God. But nevertheless, today, amen, many of us, amen, all of us have drifted off from the place that God intended us to be. And you can see it more and more, amen, in the society that we're living in. I want to take you quickly to Romans chapter 1. I've got several uh, verses of scripture I want to share with you. But in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, it speaks to us about the day that we're living in. The New Living Translation, listen to this and see if it doesn't sound familiar. It said, when they refused to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their evil minds and let them do that should never be done. Mm -hmm. They refused to believe what he said or do it his way. So God said, all right, go ahead, do it. Do what you're going to do. Amen. Verse 29 says their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, fighting, deception, malicious behavior and gossip. Anybody seen any of those things? They are backstabbers, hmm, haters of God, insolent, proud and boastful. They are forever inventing new ways of sinning and disobedient to their parents. No, we don't have that problem, do we? Verse 31, they refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless and unforgiving. You realize how many things today have become just the norm? They are fully aware of God's penalty for those who do these things, yet they go right ahead and do them anyway, and worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. 
We live in a day where sin has corrupted the world to thinking that the exception is now the norm. The things that used to be terrible and horrible and we wouldn't even imagine, now you just see them every day. You see them on television every time. You see people lying all the time about stuff. Hey, man, look at reality television. They're they, they lying about this and they're cursing about that and they're backstabbing and they're talking about it and they're gossiping. It just becomes a natural. Before you know it, you write in the same gossip, talking about the same thing on the phone. Girl, did you see that? Did you see what they did? I would have done that too. I don't even believe that happened like that. Amen. Because it's become the things of the world have become the norm. But that is not what God made us to be. We were looking last night, amen, at a special about Jeffrey Dahmer. Y'all remember him? Amen. He, he, he was a man that became corrupted by insatiable desires that were cravings inside of him. And the one thing that you notice, and you notice with people like that, is the more they get, the more they want. That's what sin will do to you. You'll never be satisfied. The more you get, the more you want, because it constantly draws you. It's never for, it's fulfilling for a moment, but it constantly draws you to want more and more and more. That was good, but now I need to experience something more. It will take you deeper and deeper. That's the mindset that sin and disobedience to God will bring you into. That's why there's a need for restoration. That's why there's a need to get back because sin separates us from God. And the only remedy for sin, according to God, the only thing that it could come up with is death. The wages in Romans chapter 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death. If there is sin, some, the only way to recompense for it is something's got to die. It can't be straightened out. It can't be worked around. It can't be just forgotten or bypass the wages of sin for every sin you've committed you're worthy of death now think about how many times over you could have died by now wages of sin is death in order for life to happen somebody's got to die but god figured out a way amen to keep that 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 penalty of sin off of you by allowing something to die in your place something's got to die but God figured out a way, amen, to cause something to die in your place for the sins that you're commit, you've committed. You ought to be shouting right now, amen, because if it wasn't for that, we'd have no hope. We wouldn't even be in this, this place. Why would we be here? Because there is no hope. But God came up with a way because he wanted you back. How many of you know God wants you back? Blood sacrifices became the way. Something died in its place. But the blood sacrifices of animals that we saw in the Old Testament, the Bible says that those weren't, amen, truly the recompense. They were just a promissory note, promising of what was yet to come. There was an ultimate sacrifice that was to come. Hebrews 9 and 22 says, And almost all things that are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Something has to die in order for you to live. If you want to live, something has to die. Every sin that we've committed is worthy and has to be recompensed by death. The issue of having something die for you is that something can't die for you that is already worthy of death itself. Amen? Amen? You can't die for me because you already messed up. You can't help me by dying. You got to deal with your own sins, amen? I can't die for you because I have my own burden that I'm carrying. I need something that's outside of the mess that we're in that can die in my place. In other words, I need somebody or something that is innocent to die for the guilty. Oh, hallelujah. This is the mystery of Christ, amen, that he physically was born of a woman, but yet born somehow outside of man. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and from that, amen, he was formed inside of her. Jesus Christ was born, amen, without the inheritance or the heritage of sin in his life. Not only was he born that way, but he lived that way for 33 years without sin ever touching him. Even though he was tempted, even though he experienced the things that we had experienced, even though he saw and was exposed to what we've been exposed to, he never allowed sin, amen, to control his life. All of his life, he did what he saw, the Bible says, of the Father rather than doing of himself. That was the mindset he had. That's the mindset we have to have today. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not living this for me. I'm living for God. And so he came to do things, number one, to demonstrate a sinless life. 
He lived for 33 years before us, showing us what it looked like to live without sin in your life. He was showing us how we were intended to be. Amen. He was showing us the image that we're trying to get back to. Amen. We look at that many times. We say, that's a high bar. Because if that was me, amen, when they were trying to nail me to that cross, oh, God. Huh? Jesus said he could have called on 10,000 angels. Guess what? I would have been calling. Angels, come on now. We got, yeah. Amen. But, but Jesus showed us how. He demonstrated how to live a sinless life. He showed us the image of what God is calling us back to. That's what he wants us to be. Number two, amen, he came to die in our place. Because he had no sin, because he was not born with sin, because he had lived no sin, he had a righteous life, and his dying, amen, was not qualified, amen, because of sin. So when he died, he died in our place. Come on, somebody ought to thank God right there for that. Come on, I said you really need to thank God right there. Amen, if you know that God died, Jesus died for you, come on and give him a praise real quick. Hallelujah. He substituted his own death for your death. He died that we might live. And because he was a perfect sacrifice, he carried with him the sins of every person, every situation, past, present, and future. Your sin price has been paid. Death has been paid because Jesus died on a cross. Amen. Not worthy of it, but he died for you and he died for me. Come on, somebody praise him right now. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28 said, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. He died in your place. He substituted for you. Now, the only thing that you can do, the only work that you are, that's required of you to be saved is to acknowledge and accept the sacrifice that he already made. Jesus already did it for you. He says before in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for by grace are we saved. He says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus has done the work for you. So to be saved, the only thing you are required to do is acknowledge and accept the transfer that Christ has made for you. You have to be willing to let your sins go. Not only let the things that you've done, but let your sin mentality, let your life of sin, let your purpose of sin go. Amen. Some of us are willing to let him pay the price for what, we, what we've done, but we want to keep on doing. <laughs> Amen. You've got to be ready to let go of your mentality, your life, your attitude, your mindset of living for self and say, God, I am ready to live now for you. How many of you want to be what God intended you to be? You've got to make the choice. God, I'm ready to let go of this me that I've become. I'm ready to let you clean me up and, and wipe me down and wash me over and put me back into the image of the son and the daughter of God that you meant me to be. I'm ready to stand on this earth as a child of God and carry your authority and look and be what you want me to be. Come on, somebody say amen. You've got to choose him. You've got to choose him. You've got to choose to make that choice to let go. And this is to everybody, the young and the old. Amen. You're not too young. Amen. That you don't need to be saved either. Amen. You're not too old. Well, I've been through so much. It's too late now. No, everybody that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Every one of us has to make a choice for themselves. Listen, you can't do a group choice. It's not you and your friends deciding, okay, we want to be saved today. No, no, no. It's not you and your brothers and your sisters. It's not you and your family. It's not you and your school friends. You have to choose. Somebody say, you have to choose. And when you make that choice, you're deciding to exchange your life for him. It's an exchange of your life. In place of his death. In other words, he's dying for you so that you can continue to live. Where you would have died, you continue to live. But since he has died in your place, guess what? You have to live for him. The image that he started, amen, demonstrating to us is that which we take on in our place. When you give yourself to Christ, you have to decide I'm no longer my own. Hmm, that's the choice you got to make. Okay, God, I'm not living for me anymore. 
So listen, it doesn't matter what kind of attitude that I had that I liked. It's not going to matter how much I loved me. Come on now. It's not going to matter how much, you know, I was comfortable, amen, with, with my attitude and, and the way I handled things and the way I did people. It doesn't matter, amen, how good I felt about how I handled situation. It's not about what I wanted to do with the rest of my life because I've given my life to Christ. Now I'm living it for him. You have to be ready to say, God, show me what you want me to be. Change my life, change my attitude, change my direction. I thought I had a career path, but God, whatever you want to do with it. I thought there was, this is what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. This is where I wanted to go. But God, I'm trusting in you now. And remember, he will provide for your needs and desires, but he'll do it in a way that fits with his will. So you're trusting him. You're not just throwing everything away. You're trusting him to be the source of where you're going instead of trusting you to figure it all out yourself. Are you still with me? This is the choice of salvation. This is step one. This is the first part of God getting you back is sending Christ to die in your place and you selecting to accept that and accept that new life. Everybody say new life. I'm no longer living the old life. I'm ready to live the new life. Now, I want you to understand this. The Bible teaches us some things about this. First of all, about accepting, but it also talks about baptism. Baptism is the action that is taken as a confirmation of what we believe. Some of you may not under, fully understand what that's, why we need to be baptized. First of all, God told us to be baptized. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what baptism does for you is baptism is taking an action on what you're believing in your mind and in your heart. How many of you ever really wanted to do something but found that you didn't actually ever do it? Amen. That's because you didn't turn your desires into action. There's a lot of things we think about, we want to do, we want to achieve. I really want to do this, but nothing happens until you take a first step. If you want to go back to school, sooner or later, you're going to have to enlist, enroll in school. Amen. You're going to have to pick up a book sooner or later. Amen. You're going to have to open, turn on a computer, something. Amen. If that's what you're going to do. If you want to get in shape, you're going to have to do something different, amen? You're going to have to sign up to a gym, and you're going to have to get some barbells. You're going to have to get some, at least some tennis shoes, amen? And you can get out and, and, and walk or run or do something. You've got to take a first step, amen? Not only do you have to get the right equipment, you have to do something. Baptism is a confirmation in action of what you believed for. I believe in Christ. Now I'm confirming that by taking an action on what I have believed for. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, I told you I had a few scriptures for you today. You can get the CD. Amen. Verse 9 and 10 says that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Listen, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. That's why we talk so many times about not just thinking something but speaking it declaring it because you need to confirm what's in your heart it's good that you feel it and God knows what you feel but you put it into action when you speak it it's one thing to feel that you love God but it's another thing to speak from your heart God I love you you let the whole world know you let the devil know that God I love you I'm standing for you amen power moves when you speak Speak it. And so you feel something in your heart, but then you take action on it when you declare it. If you want to change some things in your life, you need to start speaking them. Right. Tired of behaving this way. Tired of acting this way. Tired of being overcome with this. Don't just be tired. Start speaking the difference. I am going to be employed. I am going to be successful. I am going to start this business. I am going to make a difference. There is going to be a change in my life, in my home. I'm expecting something greater. Speak it. Somebody say, speak it. Oh, y'all didn't say that like a minute. Come on, shout, speak it. Yeah. Let the devil be afraid of what you're going to say. Right. Come on, somebody. I said, let the devil be afraid of what you're going to say. Right. He doesn't know what's going to come out of your mouth, but he needs to fear what you might speak into the atmosphere. It says, accept and confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. And verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Your acknowledgement uh, aligns with, uh, your, your Christ, with, with Christ. Your acknowledgement of your alignment with Christ, amen, comes forth when you take action on what it is that you're believing for. I'm believing I'm aligned with Christ. 
Now I'm being baptized in the name of Christ. It means I'm confirming my alignment with him. God, I've believed, I've accepted, but now I'm taking an action step. Romans chapter 3, chapter 6, verse 3 says, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Amen. We're aligning with him even as he died. Amen. We're aligning with him. Verse four, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. When you are baptized, you are aligning with Christ. I said it, I believed it, now I'm taking action on it. It's a confirmation that I am one of Christ. And so the step one of salvation is the step of aligning ourselves and confirming our alignment with Jesus Christ. You have to be ready and willing to change. Change your allegiance from what, it's, what I'm about to what God's about. If you haven't changed your allegiance, let me tell you this, step two, three, four, five, six, is not going to happen and you're going to be frustrated. Why is it that this isn't working? Why, is it not, why am I not seeing God moving in this way in my life? Why is this not happening? It's because you're still trying to do it in your own self and own flesh and own mind. He can't build on that. You have to start with a true surrender and submission to the purpose and the will of God. That's what you're returning to. That's what you have to sign up for. That's what you have to commit to. You got to choose.